Today we will continue to see phrases and everyday expressions taken from my series Besarobi when I talked about Lubna and her parents from the TV show Sabaya. In the first lesson, I talked about several expressions and phrases. You could check them over here if you didn't see them yet. Yalla, let's start. Are you ready to take your Levantine Arabic to the next level? Then head to my website and you will find quick reviews with all the words and phrases from each lesson. Podcasts for on-the-go learning and flashcards for effective study and repetition. Best of luck on your language learning adventure! You could use the word kharaj in several situations and every time it will mean something different. Let's see first how Lubna used this word. As we saw before, Lubna was worried about her parents that they are having a hard time and she was getting ready to travel to her village to check on them at night. But Noor was worried about her that she will travel by herself at night and she was asking her to stay and wait till the morning. And she said, Lubna, أجلي سفرك للصبح. تأخر الوقت هلأ تطلعي. Lubna, postpone your travel till the morning. It's late to travel now. أجلي, here it is a command. She is requesting her to postpone her travel. أجلي, سفرك. سفر, it is the travel. سفرك, your travel. أجلي, سفرك. للصبح, till the morning. تأخر الوقت, it is late. تأخر, it is a verb in Arabic and we have to conjugate it according to the thing that we are talking about. So that's why we are using a verb here. تأخر الوقت, the time is late. هلا تطلعي, تطلعي, it means to go out or to go up. But here it means to travel, to go. هلا تطلعي. لبنى أجلي سفرك للصبح تأخر الوقت هلا تطلعي and لبنى responded to her wanting to say no that's out of the question I cannot do it I have to go now and she responded with لا مو خرج لا مو خرج so when someone is asking you to do something and you feel like this is cannot be done or it is out of the question you could just answer with لا مخرج. For example, do you think Sami is able to fix the computer? برأيك Sami خرج يصلح الكمبيوتر برأيك in your opinion. خرج يصلح he is able to fix. الكمبيوتر the computer. برأيك Sami خرج يصلح الكمبيوتر. It could mean also capable or not capable of doing something. So for example, Sami is not capable of writing this article. Sami مو خرج يكتب هاي المقالة. مو خرج يكتب he's not capable of writing هاي المقالة this article. So when it is followed by a verb here it could mean able or capable of doing it. Sami مو خرج يصلح الكمبيوتر. Sami مو خرج يكتب هاي المقالة. When you use it with nouns that are connected to fashion or style, here it means good fit or suits you. For example, هذا القميص, this shirt. خرجك, it fits you or it suits you. So we could change the suffix at the end of the خرج according to who we are talking to. خرجك or خرجها. خرجنا, it fits us, it fits you, it fits her. You could change the suffix according to who you want to talk about. هذا القميص خرجك. You could use it with anything that is a good fit for a person, situation, or even a place. You could use it even with furniture. If you think, like for example, this couch fits this room very well, so you could say هاي الصوفاية خرج صالونك. هاي الصوفاية this couch. خرج it fits. Salonak, your living room. Hey, sofaye, kharj salonak. But be careful if you use kharjak or kharjak by itself without following it with a noun or a verb. Here it means it serves you right. 
So in other words, you deserve what happened to you. Only in bad connotation. It doesn't have a good meaning. So be careful when using it. We use it usually when you warn someone that don't do this because you will have a bad result, but they didn't listen to you and they did what you warned them not to do. And now you want to say, you deserve what happened to you because you didn't listen to me. خرجك تستاهل يلي صار لك ما سمعت مني. خرجك it serves you right or you deserve it. حذرتك I warned you ما سمعت مني you didn't listen to me. خرجك بتستاهل تستاهل also it means you deserve it but in it could have good or bad side so you could use it in either way. But خرجك only in a bad situation. خرجك بتستاهل يلي صار لك حذرتك وما سمعت مني You deserve what happened to you I warned you and you didn't listen to me خليني روح اليوم هيئتهم علقانين على مرتبة هيئتهم علقانين على مرتبة Each word in this phrase might need a full lesson to explain how to use it and what does it mean But today we will just try to go over it quickly to understand how to use it inside this phrase. خليني روح اليوم هيئتهم علقانين على امر التبه. هيئة it means appearance. We use it to say it seems like. And you could attach all the different suffixes to say you seem like, she seem like, and so on. So هيئتك مشغول. You seem busy. هيئتك you seem. مشغول, busy. If you are talking to a woman, هيئتك مشغولة. هيئتك, you seem busy, مشغولة. هيئتك مشغول, هيئتك مشغولة. علقانين, it's coming from the verb على. على, it means to get stuck. You could use it for people and objects. For example, the key got stuck in the door. المفتاح على بالباب. المفتاح, the key. على, got stuck. We are using the masculine huwa here because the miftah, the key, is masculine in Arabic. Al miftah ale bilbab in the door. Al miftah ale bilbab. Or if you want to say, I was stuck in the traffic. Ale it bil ajaa. Ale it I got stuck. Bil ajaa in the traffic. Ale it bil ajaa. Al miftah ale bilbab. But when you are stuck at the moment, you don't use the verb. You use the adjective derived from the verb. عالآن, عالآن, عالآنين. Masculine, feminine, and plural. And that's why Lubna used هيئتهن عالآنين. It seems they are stuck or they are fighting right now. So we use the verb على and عالآنين. عالآن, عالآنين, metaphorically to say people are fighting or arguing about something. So, هي إتهن عالآنين. So, if you are stuck right now, you could say عالآن بالعجأة. I'm stuck in the traffic right now. عالآن بالعجأة. Now, the third word. هي إتهن عالآنين عالآ. عالآ, it's a verbal noun. It is also coming from the verb على. In Arabic, we use so many verbal nouns to describe the situation in general. So what Slubna is saying here, she's saying they are stuck in the stuckness. Here she's wanting to emphasize that they are really fighting. And she followed it with the adjective مرتبه. مرتبة is an adjective and it means neat or well done. It could have good or bad meaning depending on the context and depending what you follow it with. So if you tell someone جاكيتك مرتب, here you are saying your jacket is neat and well done. It means it fits you well, the color well, uh, they match each other and everything is perfect about it. جاكيتك مرتب. You could use مرتب, مرتبة, مرتبين as an adjective to describe anything you feel like it is well done. But on the other hand, also you could use it in after some words or some things that you want to describe to say that they are 
really bad like one the one that Lubna used and said when you use it after negative phrases here it means it's really bad so بالزور it means with difficulties or barely so it is an adverb used to express that something has been done but it took a lot of efforts and difficulties Lubna said mama بالزور لحتى قدرت تحكي معي mama mom بالزور with difficulties barely قدرت she was able تحكي معي to talk to me mama بالزور لحتى قدرت تحكي معي Let's see other examples. I barely convinced him to go to the party. بالزور أقنعته يروح على الحفلة. بالزور barely or hardly with difficulties. أقنعته I أقنعت I convinced and the O here him. أقنعته يروح على الحفلة to go to the party. بالزور أقنعته يروح على الحفلة. أول ما بتوصلي بتخبرينه بالطمنينة. Lubna was traveling at night. Noor and Samiha were worried about her and they want her to call them and tell them that she arrived safely. So they said, Tamnina. Awal ma btusali btkhabrina u btamnina. Awal ma btusali, first thing when you arrive. Btkhabrina, you will let us know. بالطمنينة and you will reassure us. بالطمنينة it's coming from the verb طمن to reassure. You can use it in many different situations. To check on someone who is sick, traveling or in a trouble. So just to reassure that they are doing well. For example, if someone is sick and you want to check to see how they are doing. So you could say طمنيني كيفو أبوكي. Tamnini, reassure me. Kifo, how is he? Abuki, your father. Tamnini, kifo abuki. If someone is traveling and you want to tell them, let me know that you arrived safely, you could say, Tamnini, lemma tusali. Reassure me when you arrive. Lemma, lemma, it is when tusali you arrive. If you are talking to a man, you could say, Tamnini. لما توصل. Let's say someone is in trouble and you want to check on them to see how they are doing. So you could say طمنيني شو صار بالمشكلة? Reassure me. What happened with the problem? Or طمنيني شو صار بالمشكلة? شو صار? What happened? بالمشكلة with the problem. طمنيني شو صار بالمشكلة? طمنيني شو صار بالمشكلة? So طمنيني to a man. Tamnini to a woman, it carries the feeling that I'm worried and I need reassurance. Tamnini, Tamnini. Remember to go to my website ArabicWithManar.com to get study material for all these phrases and all the lessons that I've done so far. I hope you will use all these phrases to surprise your Arab friends and family. There are so many different expressions in Arabic. If you have any expressions you want me to explain, leave them in the comment and I will make a new video about everyday expressions and phrases. Yalla, bye!